right, it is demobilization time. Demobilization time, easy for me to say. But uh, as you can see, uh, exception. This is a leader does not maintain units up to half his command rating. Uh, that is if he's rank, ranking leader in the space. That is applies to our sieges. If a leader is currently besieging a stronghold, he must roll less than or equal his battle rating to stay in the field over the winter. Uh, but only, you know, half of his, uh, uh, retain half of his rounded up command rating of units. Uh, otherwise, he and all his forces must, in the space, must demobilize. So, uh, we will start with old, uh, what's his name, Zenji. And he needs to roll uh, less than equal. Let's roll less than equal to his battle rating. Equal to his battle rating. Well, I thought it would have been half, but it's just battle rating. Okay, hold on a second. Alright, so the battle rating is that middle number. We'll be right back. And there's old ZJ. So we are needing a three or less to stay in the field for the winner. Muslim player rolling the red dice. He does not, so he has to demobilize. That's a big hit. Uh, he demobilizes first. Then uh, we'll see what happens with the Crusaders. Uh, it says they never demobilize, but maybe he has to do the same thing. We'll find that out after we get rid of uh, the Siege of Antioch. Be right back. All right, so to the surprise and pure pleasure <laughs> besieged besieged in Antioch uh, there will be no more Muslim calls to prayer well I think they allow it probably in Antioch but outside the city walls the uh, Muslims have gone uh, I think that's about it for demobilization I'll go through make sure there ain't no Seljuks I have uh, forgotten about uh, maybe right here nope they're all good all right there you go. Muslim force pool, and of course, the diplomatic advantage marker, which will come into play with this next hand of cards, will be uh, definitely definitive. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure we did everything right, and we will see what happens with the Crusaders demobilization. Be right back. All right, now this is key also about the units that are inside of Aleppo. Uh, besieged units inside a wall city only demobilize if all of the besiegers do, besieged Muslim units wait until the Christian player demobilizes before demobilizing themselves. This is an exception to the usual order. So, uh, we go to this one right here. Crusaders and the Mongols, including leaders, never demobilize except by event. This takes precedence over the above bullets. So, uh, the old siege of Aleppo continues. And the units inside will stay. Uh, going through the demobilization, making sure I did everything right. Come on, we back. All right. Well, unfortunately, it don't say much about the Byzantines. They are not Crusaders. So I went ahead and uh, a leader does not demobilize. May also retain as equal to half. So that uh, Byzantine leader had a command rating of six. He had uh, four units to four Byzantine units under him, and I went ahead and moved one to the Christian players force pool. So the demobilization is now over. We'll be turning to turn marker to turn number three, the last turn before the Muslim player to make game of it. And the thing of it is, if he does. <laughs> The old stack comes on, so it's a tough game for the Muslim player. Although me not getting Odessa to begin with was probably, if you played the scenario, definitely go for a Odessa. What we had over here, yeah, that's where I went. My that's where I made my mistake. Uh, I might not have time on the forces, but uh, I just done with the end of the turn, and uh, we will see. Uh, what is next? Uh, victory. There's no victory conditions. 
Then we'll go down to the replacement phase. All right, so to replacement place, replacement phase for the Christian player. And of course, uh, down here, Crusaders only gain replacements via an event, so there will be no replacing the uh, Christian dead pile. That's mostly what these replacements are. Like I said last, uh, replacement phase. Uh, they're mostly used to build up units in your dead pile. Crusader can't do it. Now, if there was Byzantine units in there, I could do that, so. Unfortunately, in the horse pool, I don't think that affects him. We'll go ahead and see. But uh, I think it might, it, this might have nothing to do but with the mustering phase. So, no dead pool replacements for the Christian player, and I don't think there'll be anything for the Muslim player. Way back. All right, we're here with the replacement phase. And uh, that phase deals mostly with uh, units that are in the dead pile. And uh, it's not really applying, unfortunately. Christian player, Crusader rather, uh, he don't get replacements through the replacement phase, only through card events. And as you can see, no Muslim. So it's mostly uh, placing units in your dead pile are units that are on the board that are reduced. Uh, but that doesn't apply to anybody yet. They all went home to muster. And nobody suffered any real casualties. So we are going on to... Let me see here. Oh, strategy phase. Taking replacements. I don't know. What do we do next? I guess mustering. End the turn, victory, replacement phase, mustering phase. Let me go look at this, make sure uh, I got my sequence of play correct. Alright, it's all just right in front of your eyes, but just look. You never know sometimes. <laughs> Alright, replacement, we just did that, and now we're at mustering. So, uh, beginning with the Christian player. This could be key in the mustering phase, too. So, yeah. Get into a little excitement, not much on the replacements yet. Until we get casualties, but we will start to muster. And of course, uh, that'll deal mostly with the Muslim player because the Crusaders don't demobilize. Be back. All right, key part to this is the mustering phase. And a uh, Christian player has no units in his force pool to muster, but the uh, Muslim player has a couple of units here to muster. So, what are we going to do? Alright. So, I think on his own, in a time allotted, which means uh, seven cards, it's going to be tough for the Muslim player with the forces he's got including these guys, so we'll just see what we can do, but I gotta get forces gathered. Uh, once the Christian player sees that uh, the shift has been moved back to Odessa, it frees up forces at uh, Antioch, and, uh, well, maybe Aleppo. But Muslim players gotta take Odessa, gotta hang on to Aleppo in this next turn. Uh, put some leaders here with forces. One is a blocking force and one is the actual siege force. A big part of my strategy is going to have to be diplomacy. If I can get uh, some of these neutral Fatimids. I think they were all Fatimids. Let's see here. We got uh, oh, Damascus. If I can get some of these guys over to my side, and old uh, Vitzer, Vitzier, or Utzier. I don't know if that's a U or V. He's got a bunch of forces there too. So we will be uh, as soon as we get those strategic cards dealt. Definitely looking at the diplomatic front to begin with, and that's what I think is going on with this game. 
uh, when you first get those cards, you'll be using those little numbers, sub numbers up here. And diplomacy comes into play in the first part of the strategy phases. But uh, that's what we're doing. That's what the Muslim players got in mind. Uh, blocking, laying siege, capturing, with the help of maybe a threat from some of these forces down here. Although it'll take them a while to get on up to the fight, but you know what? We also got uh, victory points. Keep in mind, victory points for Muslim forces, pro uh, anti-Christian Muslim forces, I should say, would definitely come into play. Get complicated, get interesting. Hope everything's fine in your little game world. Also, be back. As you can see, I had to start out with the Christian player, and uh, luckily for the uh, Byzantines, their lone unit force pool was able to join their uh, comrades down there at Tarsus. So that was pretty much a swing and a miss, or a you know, futile little dance there with the demobilization and mustering, but luckily he was able to keep most of his forces. Uh, Crusaders, the red units, don't demobilize. Byzantines, I guess, do. Didn't say, so we went ahead and demobilized him anyway. But he has rejoined his forces in Tarsus. All right. Now, as far as the Muslim player goes, we got all the Celtic cavalry and uh, Mosul, and a couple gathered around each castle. We got uh, Emir and. Senji and uh, Haran, the mayor over here, and Man Bill, Man Beej, or something like that. But anyway, I was able to empty out the force pool, which is always good. And uh, yeah, we got some Celtics down here at uh, Balbec, and over here at Hama. Draw the stronghold castles, but uh, that is it. I think that is going to do it for the uh, mustering phase. Can the Muslim player get his forces gathered without wasting too many cards and having enough cards to do the attack? Oh, you get a seven. Well, I think we're going to be dealing those out here in a second. So that is it. Uh, replacements, take replacements. Uh, yep. After Lustring Phase, Deal Strategy Cards. We're back. Alright then. Uh, of course, there's a tie when it comes to Zenji and old uh, Baldwin. As to, well, let me see, who is this? Yeah, I think so. Let me look, let me look. I'll be right back. Right, yeah, I was correct. Zinji and Old Baldwin, but uh, their battle ratings have no numbers the same. In the case of a tie, it goes to the Christian player. So the Christian player will be playing his uh, uh, strategy card first. And uh, let's see what we've got. It's all about the cards. We look at these cards here, show what is up, and we will be right back. Alright, well, a Christian player's got a bunch of good cards. He's only got two of them, really, that he uh, doesn't need. This one here has no use at all, except for its ops value. This one's a winter campaign, which will come in handy. Uh, it has a Defender Siege event, which don't do me no good, but this will come in handy. This has got to be... Uh, Played as my last card, so we'll see if we can hold on to that one. Like I said, this is an ops value card, but I got all kinds of good cards, either with the event or with a siege event. I got some really good attacker siege events. As a matter of fact, one takes down his a resistance factor by two or three. So Antioch might not be long. I also got one that moves a fleet. Uh, the Venetian fleet arrives, helps move those units out of. Uh, Tarso, Tarsus, maybe in Antioch, the Byzantines, 
So uh, just looking at this hand here, it ain't looking good for a Muslim player. <laughs> and like I said, I should have, as a Muslim player, should have went after Odessa. That was probably my big mistake. But I was looking for that low fruit over here, thinking all I needed was one uh, victory point instead of uh, two or three. So we're going to try to salvage what we can out of this as the um, Muslim player is bungling. Cause he's only got one turn to do all this in, so we'll see. We'll see what's gonna happen. But uh, I got a lot of cards to look at. I also got some diplomacy options. So we will see. Lots to think about in this game. We'll be right back. All right. Let me turn the turn the Bluetooth off and see if that helps any. I'm here looking at these cards. Decide what my move would be. I got some really good cards here, and I've yet to look at the Muslim deck. So when I play a card, I'm gonna have to flip on over here and look at what the Muslims got. I haven't checked their deck out yet, but like I said, uh, Christians are stacked. I think I'm gonna take advantage of diplomacy and use this card here because, as you can see, it's got me a little one. Minus modifier, unlike my other diplomacy card. All these diplomacy cards got plus two, and that, that ain't gonna help you none. So I don't understand that, but they got me a little diplomacy modifier there. Now let's go over to the table. Who do I want to try to diplomatically insult? Oh, bad lighting, bad. Just like Seinfeld with this woman, bad lighting spot. So uh, what we got here? Oh, I'm looking underneath the Christian table, and I'm noticing that. Uh, well, Byzantium's already mine, but there's nothing going on with Lesser Armenia. Fatimids are zero, so I'd have to, I'd have to roll a one. Uh, three or less for Damascus. And uh, I can't zoom on in here. There we go. Three or less for Damascus, minus a one on the roll. So I think that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, we'll go ahead and play... This card right here. Oh, I can get it out. Over on the pile. And I gotta roll a three or less to bring them over to my side. Two. Minus one is a one. So that'll do it. We got some news on the diplomatic front. Ah, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. There we go. I mean, of Damascus is now pro-Christian looking out for their own interest thinking that maybe if we get on the Christian side we can carve out a little empire for ourselves who knows what the little ins and outs of the little diplomatic treaty was but we will now be taking off the neutral markers from the Damascus units. Got some Celtics right there. All right, well, that'll be solidified this area up for the uh, Christian player because we also have uh, oh, the old man of the mountains. Got a mess of any of uh, Senji's forces that come around there. Alright, so that's the deal on that. I think I got all the... Oop, we got one down here. Yeah, so Damascus is now pro-Christian. I could use his forces and go on his land. I will read about the particulars. But, uh, big play. Big card play for the Christian player. Now what I will do is go over and look at the Muslim hand, because he might have had something that negated it. You never know. It's a card playing game, and since I'm playing solo, to see what's up so let me go check out his hand and uh, we will be back all right we're back and uh my first glance at the muslim hand this is going to be an interesting turn <laughs> this is where the game gets fun uh nothing to mess with my uh uh my diplomacy he didn't have nothing that could mess with that let's look at him see if he's got any diplomatic cards i didn't even oh he's got one here but it's got a zero modifier on it so that ain't gonna help the roll that last one really helped me. Yeah, he's got some nice cards, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a card battle back and forth when it comes down to it. So right now I won't let you see what he's got. Just let me know that uh, he's got a good hand also, and some of that tit for tat card play will be coming into play. 
So, uh, there we go with the Muslim hand, Christian hand. Christian just played. And now, the uh, initiative is on the Muslim side. Uh, here's the board. Oh, I just got a text. My girlfriend's gonna stop it. White Castle. Uh, it's gaming season, everybody. I'm in love. I'm loving this. I new puppy's really been uh, taking my time. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna start a channel called The Adventures of Little Luca. If I can get all the details worked out, I'm not, I'm not able to switch accounts on my video editor and upload videos on it yet. But I am trying to figure it out. Uh, yeah, we got more games coming. Enjoying the heck out of this game. Don't get to play it too much. But I really do enjoy it. We'll be back. All right. So looking over my newly acquired Damascus units. What the situation is. And it, it's only brief. Like I said, uh, the Muslim player is coming up with his turn. He might want to whisper in their ear. I'm sure he's got some envoys on his way to Damascus to talk to old... Uh, oh, this will be a good one to try to pronounce. Yun... Or Unar. All right, well, Unar's got some good cavalry troops underneath him. And uh, we'll definitely be taking advantage of that if we can. But we can't do nothing with him yet. It is the Muslim player's turn. Find out what he wants to do. Oh, what was I about to think of? <laughs> okay, oh. Might want to take advantage of his diplomatic advantage marker. We'll find out what's up. Be looking at the Muslim hand, seeing if it's diplomacy, movement, or siege. We'll be back. 